The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, this eighth day of December. December, last month of the year. And my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time at 877-927-68. What? 927-6648. Ooh. After all these years, I was saying that. All right. So here we are. Dow's down 16 at uh, 17,941. S&P's down $1.74, 2,073. Comp index is up 6 at 47.86. Um, you've got gold up 3 at 11.93. Going to be watching this real closely to see how the dollar acts over the next three days. Probably two days. Uh, silver is um, uh, up 0 0.03 at 16.29. Platinum's up seven, and oh, that high grade copper back under three. It's at 2.9 right now. <clears throat> Watching this real closely. We've got crude oil whoa, at 63.90. Uh, filled up, was it yesterday or the day before? And it was really a pleasant surprise. I, I, don't, I don't do that much mileage, so I don't really follow it too closely uh, at the gas pump, that is. But it was a pleasant surprise. And bonds are up a half a point at 142. TLT is up 0.76 at 121.85. So we've had some fabulous few hours uh, with John. Uh, John Logan over there in the Philippines. I was worried about him over the weekend, but it looks like he survived very nicely. And uh, great to hear his voice early this morning. Great program. And then Steve Rhodes, same thing. Two hours of Steve. We, we had really a very interesting few hours. It was a very interesting few hours in the market up until this point. Well, it's not even a few hours. It's not even two hours. So it's one and a half or just over. And um, a lot of information being imparted. Mike... It's very interesting. It's, it's very difficult sometimes to get rid of your emotion, to try to do the analysis. But I, I don't think I've spent this amount of time over the last week and a half in analyzing and trying my very best to analyze without um, having a preconception, just going through each particular time frame of each sector of each index and seeing what's there there is still residual strength left the IBB spike today now I forgot that there was a conference going on this week and I actually thought I remember there was a conference I thought it was last week into early in the week and uh, but there's still enough news to push that IBB to 314.97 up six this morning um, leg D in the daily but believe me that strength because of cell gene which is only now in leg C recycled into um, leg C C L E gene let me just move this away uh, cell gene leg G stash being the weekly what I had said on Friday is that the financials and the um, the biotechs, the weekly charts were very good, and the monthly charts were improving tremendously. The daily charts were getting a little bit extended, but this turns out to be in Celgene Leg C, in uh, Amgen also. Um, one of the, the this is one of the old heavies. This is an old line biotech uh, drug for Amgen AMGN at 172 up 279. It's at um, in leg G slash C in the daily, and the weekly is the same thing, and the monthly is in E. Ha they, they're looking parabolic, but they haven't really gone parabolic yet. I was really ex anticipating, based on the work that I did, that there'd be some kind of a pullback, and that would be the test of internal strength. Now, whether this is just influenced by f absolutely... Fabulous. This is really great news that's been coming out in many of the biotechs with these the new drugs and uh, some of them about to come online, some of their final tests. Uh, so you cannot deny this is a great area. And those people have just been long, long, long forever and buying all the dips. They've been 100% correct. We had in my opening call being very good uh, on the way up in just the last, I'd say the last three to five sessions where I've been trying to short with very tight stops. 
uh, small positions hasn't been uh, that successful. Uh, we'll just have to see what's going on here because uh, the IBB is a very important part of the QQQ series. And the Q, look at it right now, leg D, MACDs uh, actually extend a little higher. Stochastics at 94%. That's really good. Some of the signals are saying you're, you're very close to bumping into some kind of resistance. So talking about resistance, look at the QQQ series. Can't get out of its own way in this rectangle formation. Peak B, uh, peak F, uh, slash B, but probably peak F in the uh, daily chart, top of 106.25. This is the NASDAQ. This is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. There's that inside track uh, weekly chart that I've been talking about for so long, how um, it spiked above right there. It just got above that line, just a tad above the line, but it's really stopping at this resistance area. The, in the up channel, I call this inside track. You don't even need a channel for it. You have a trend line, and then you draw a parallel trend line, which should be the reversal area. And that's exactly what's happening here. It isn't a reversal area yet, but it's just stubbornly not breaking because the stochastics are 96% of the QQQ. Um, the PowerShares QQQ Trust series, and the MACD is still good, and yet it just hasn't found that extra strength so far. Look at this. This is very interesting. Talking about those um, channel lines and the trend lines, look at this. I, I spent a lot of time this weekend. I sent out to my subscribers daily, weekly, monthly charts of a number of the indices, but I also showed that the Dow is right up against the area that has been very strong resistance for intermediate term since the, uh, since the beginning of the year. So I'm watching this really closely because if it breaks out with a stochastic 97%, that's going to be pushing it quite a bit higher. And it hasn't been able to do that yet. So that is resistance. And I've been talking about the 18,000 level as what I think is going to be a very strong when we look back over a period of a few weeks, you can look back and say, oh, that 18,000 level was the resistance area. How it handles it by being repelled sharply or whether it just hugs it, pops up above it, but cannot really break out into the 18,100s in the Dow is a big question. The dollar, now look at the dollar, and then we're going to go to calls. Um, DXY, dollar, DXY. The, the dollar, it's very interesting. Because the move that it's just had with a stochastic only at 88%, MACD good, and breaking out so strongly in this leg up, which is G slash C, which says we're probably within two, three days of a real test of the pattern that I call the Chapman Wave stalk leg, body, neck over there, and how the beak forms is going to be very interesting. Because if you put it together, leg D in the, in the weekly, leg G slash A in the monthly, but if you put it together with the uh, USDJPY, Look at this. In leg D, stochastics are 92% but turning down. MACD is not really following through. I, I get very hesitant when I see the MACD stalling. It doesn't say that you have to turn down because you need the stochastic as well. But that MACD is the momentum, and it says the momentum is starting to slow. If you look at the USD, JPY, US dollar, Japanese currency pair, you've got a doji candle right there, peak E. And the 120-minute chart is pulling back, and how it handles the low of 120.078 made uh, early in the morning on the 5th of uh, December on Friday. Friday? Yeah, it's going to be very important. Um, we'll see what happens here. And just real quickly, I wanted to show you something very interesting. Look at this. I don't often talk about it, but the Nikkei is in leg E. Maybe a peaky, we're going to watch to see that MACD, how it's flattening out there if we're looking at these charts. Right there, that first one on the left is the daily. This is the weekly. And the weekly still has, double check, 17,685. 17, yep, this is leg F slash A. Is this a brand new start to weekly charts going right into January higher with an F slash B in the monthly? <clears throat> or is this not an A but an F? And sometime towards the, th the second week of January, you see the Nikkei below 17,200 <clears throat> under the weekly 9 EMA. Well, right now, the technicals are saying that the weekly chart is very strong. The daily says probably going to pull back to the 17,700 
to six six hundred area in the next few weeks. We'll see. So okay, we're going to go to our first call. We got Shivan in Boston. Shivan, how are you? Good. How are you, Basil? Very good to I'm, hear from you again. Sorry, I feel yeah. like uh, that day time ran out on Morgan Stanley. Yeah, when you were called the other day, but I think I, I'm not sure you heard. But as we went out to the uh, to the to the final uh, break, I quickly looked at it and I said, "Oh, it looks good." But are you in it? Yeah, I'm still in it. I sold some position, but I sold live live position still uh, all open in there. S- so this is what I'm looking at, folks. We're looking at Morgan Stanley. Um, it's at thirty-seven seventy-six, up fifty-two cents. I spent a little time on this over the weekend. There is an alternate count here. If I if I count this, a very unusual pattern. If I count this particular peak very quick, A B C D. Now let, let me just back up here. The low in Morgan Stanley, Stanley on the fifteenth of October went under the two hundred period exponential moving average. And it hit 31.35. The next day, it spiked up to 33.20, but it also pulled back to 31.53. That was scary, but the day closed very nicely. And then the next day, it went above the nine-period exponential moving average, and it went all the way to a very quick peak A, one-day pullback, peak B, one-day pullback, peak C, uh, just two days to, to C, one-day pullback, then D. But it never touched the nine-period moving average. The MACD was very strong. Stochastic was great. And then it went on to an E, pulled back, touched the nine-period moving average, that black line, and then went on to an F and a G. Now, the question is, this area that I've circled, is that really an instant restart? If it is, that means that you start a brand-new buy mode, and you call, you call them A, B, C, takes a little bit of time and goes to what could be a D right here. But everything about this is no. On a daily basis, this is more likely, even though it's hard to believe that it's a brand new start to a move up. I still have to put DA. Um, everything about it looks like it's, it's wanting to break out. It is a very, a very uh, important part. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, a big, it's an important part of the XLF which is the financial S&P Select Financial Spider. That is acting beautifully. This is a great candle. I wasn't sure we'd get this kind of candle today. Um, but here again, the MACD is at 94%. Stochastic is very uh, – sorry, the MACD is very good. The stochastic is at 94%. Nothing, nothing at all wrong with this um, looking at the XLF. Do Is this now a recycle just like – the uh, Morgan Stanley chart is this saying, hey, this is a brand new A. We've broken out in the weekly chart. Monthly chart is still in leg D. Um, don't even think of going short here because the financials are actually looking very good. That's the big question. So we've got a break coming up. You are in the position. The only question is for me is how do, am I going to say to you I would add at a certain point or I'm going to say be cautious. And right now I'm leaning towards that. Can you hold on? Yes, we'll be right back with Shivan. The Dow's up. Uh- Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member, FDIC, and Equal Housing Lender. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Thinker Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Hazel, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks, we're back, and let's see, we've got the Dow just unch and SP's unch, so this is a very good uh, action. Can't deny it, good action here. And what's even more important is that um, you've got the financials that are participating, and I just want you to check on the SMHs because I did some work over the weekend on that. Yeah, I mean, watching the uh, semiconductor market vectors uh, uh, index very closely, but we're on with Shivan right now, and we're looking at um, we're looking at Morgan Stanley, and it's it's acting very well. I had a vertical move, one, two, three, four, five, five trading sessions straight up. And uh, including the, uh, let's see, the sixth session with the low of 34.56, uh, 38, 34, so that's it's about 3.5 points. That's almost, it's like 9%, just in a, whoops, in a real quick, uh, short space of time. So, uh, Shiva, this is what I'm looking at here. In the, even the weekly chart, I could give it an alternate count, but every, everything I'm looking at right at this particular point suggests that there should be some kind of a pullback in uh, Morgan Stanley weekly chart, but there is tremendous support between 36 and a quarter and 35, 30, somewhere around there, and that um, the 35.89 level right now is a nine-period exponential moving average. The monthly chart is 34.07. Now, what's really important about the monthly chart, and this is really fascinating because if you look, the 200-period moving average which was uh, broken back in July of 2007, 
uh, it hit 7364 and then had a low of 6150. That black line that folks can see, if you're looking at the, the monthly chart, that nine-period nine moving average, was tremendous resistance. And then it went just above it and held above it through the period of 2009. But that wasn't good enough. It couldn't hold it. It made an arch formation, a successful arch formation. 6.71 was the low in October of 2008. And then what does it do? It retests twice. It goes to 11.58 in October of 2011. And then July of 2012 has a higher, higher low of 1226. And that starts a very nice basing period. And as soon as it breaks out and starts to turn the nine period moving average into support, not one month has gone by that it has closed under, well, I've made it a big thick line, but it hasn't closed under that line. So at this particular point, that 200 period moving average, when it was uh, when it was broken, so it broke under the nine period moving average back in July of 2007, and then it broke decisively under the 200 period moving average in September of 2008, and only recently, um, that was in August, did it start to push above that 200 period moving average and try to treat it as support. And now that is a support level, and it suggests that maybe the testing has been done of 3269 and if that's the case 69 be really important support for Morgan Stanley our monthly I'm talking longer term and yet okay. if you look at the nine period moving average having crossed positively above the 200 period moving average with the MACD still good and the stochastic at 88 percent it says to me that in this road of once again, they have become the sector that is being covered by many fund managers. Whether it lasts only through December, I'm not sure. But it looks to me like the weekly chart, if it's in peak leg B, when it makes the peak B, it shouldn't pull back to more than the 35s. And that should start the next leg up to start leg C and then D going into January. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. It's kind of the way I'm looking at the market as well. I am expecting a lot of resistance in this area. The rotational aspect is whether it keeps the market buoyant because if there wasn't the financials and the IBB and the semis right now to help it, this market would actually be a lot lower down. But you can't always say... Um, if you exclude anything, everything's included in the market. It's, the price is the arbiter of the trend. And right now, the price is really good. So I'm going to recommend you stay in the position. Mm -hmm. But if there is a pullback towards, and I know that you, you're a long, you like to get positions for the long term, right? Oh, oh yeah. I had it for long. I'm holding it since 2009 and uh, eight, I guess. And everything oh. down and got to this point. Ah, okay, so yeah, okay, I should have asked you that in the beginning. So if you've held it through all the tribulations that it's been going through, and now uh -huh. it's on its way back, it's whether or not you add to another position. The new position that you add to has to be completely fresh. It has nothing to do with your, your earlier one. So why don't you hold on, give me a call when you start to see it pull back, and let's see if it's going to test the 36s to 35 area. That's where I probably will say to you, now you can look at that as the next longer-term position. So thank you for, for calling, Shivan. Thank you. Thank you, and, and good, good luck with the call. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar's ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tech Technician Sound. Now, let's do this. We've got a question about crude oil. So after the July 2008 high at peak D in the Chapman Wave, it plunged down to the low, huge move down. Uh, so it went from the 190 area. This is a continuous contract, so the price is not exactly the same as, as the tradable. Um, the low, it went down to 63.65. That, that's a big move. And then it started a move that goes to the H pattern, which goes to the continuous M pattern, lowercase m. And then, whoops, it breaks underneath the low bar that was made uh, 63, 65. That was in February. Yep, the month of February of 2009. And last week it went a little bit under. It went to, no, it didn't. It went to 65, 69. This week it is at 63, 31 as a low. That's uh, today. So it's gone lower. Now, let me explain to you what I'm looking at for crude oil. And I'm looking at this in conjunction with the dollar. My suspicion is that in this huge move, in the Chapman Wave methodology, if you got my CD introducing the dollars, you'll know how I talk about the H pattern, lowercase h pattern, and going to an M pattern. Within that context, the bar that takes out the left side low bar, that's the low bar from February of 2009, five years ago, over five years ago, is the very bar... The latest has to be the reversal bar that goes right back into the arch formation. That means it has to go back, in this case for the continuous contract, below the low of 
February of 2009. In this case, it would be above 63.65, number one. Number two is if I go to the weekly chart, the pattern that I often talk about in the weekly chart well, for my subscribers when I talk about candles, this long-legged doji candle that I'm looking at from last week says... If there is a close below last week's low, this is a continuous contract, maybe for, uh, I'm going to stick to that. Below 63.72, there's a really good chance that the following bar, that's next week, will see a lower low and then a bounce. Where to? To test the wick candles midpoint there this is that the wick right there the, the candle it opens at 66 that's last week and closes at 65.84 so it, no matter how low we go if we close on friday below last week's low in crude oil this will apply to the futures as well um i wonder if i can just for the moment use the uso Yep, I'll use the USO because more people have the USO than they have the continuous contract or the futures. So this is 28.10, 28.10. So this is leg E to the downside. If the USO closes below 24.73 this week on Friday, there's a good chance that the following week, Monday or Tuesday, there'll be a reversal candle to try to get back somewhere into the 2531 area and probably a little higher. And if it closes the week higher, and especially if it closes over the candle of last week, the high of 2639, then 2797 would be the nine period exponential moving average uh, target. And those are the conditions, all right? Now let's go to the next thing. The dollar, DXY, is in leg C right at this particular moment. Leg C extended. So the weekly chart is extended in leg D. In the monthly, I'm not even talking about that because it's way over the 200 period moving average. I, don't, I hate to say it, but it really looks like this is an A rather than a G. The end, not the end, but the beginning of a move that will continue into next year. We'll see. I'm not going to deal with that right now. What I do want to deal with, 87.74. Let's just say a close in the, in the dollar at any point in the next month below, let's be even safer than 87.74. Let's say a close below 87 is at 89.24. On a weekly basis, says heads up. We could, could be in for uh, a bit of a breather as gold rallies and crude oil rallies and the commodities rally. That's what I'm thinking. Now what I'm looking at is with a stochastic only at 88% rather than 93 or 97 as some of the indices are, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, we could in fact get a peak D somewhere in the 89.60 area, maybe just touches 90 for a split second and then pulls back. But the pullback says 88.67 to 88.42 in the dollar index would be the key support level. A close below that says, hey, be careful. Now we're going to test that nine-period moving average in the weekly chart of 87.74. It'll be slightly different if all that unfolds. Meantime, I don't have a signal in the dollar um, other than a possible alternate count peak F instead of F slash C in the 120 minute chart I would not be surprised if it's more more closely related to a C and there's one more spike to the upside somewhere into that 8960s area just a nominal new high that means we'd have to have one whole session uh, with no new high to make a peak C and then there'll be a pop to a leg D if there's a fall right from now from the high today of 89.55 you would have to see by tomorrow 89 taken out, the support of 89. So the dollar to me looks like it's acting fantastically in the weekly and monthly, but the daily, you remember I talk about the rudder, and that's why I'm looking at the 120-minute chart of the, of the Dow and the S&P and the Qs and, and, and the other indices because that little rudder is going to steer us in a different direction. But it has to – the rudder won't work if the tide is so great in the daily or weekly that it keeps pushing the, the vessel in, another, in the main direction. So it will only work when the, the, the rudder gets the momentum from the daily chart. The 120-minute chart gets the turn so that the daily chart can accelerate that move. So um, 
a low of 33.55. I'm, 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 someone mentioned. Is that on the crude oil continuous contract? Um, well, I don't get that. I get uh, today a low of 63.31. Oh, 33.55 in oil. Where? Uh, oh, on the crude oil going all the way back to the low? Maybe. Let me just have a look. I'll have to look at the monthly. Uh, no. Uh, maybe you're looking at a different contract. 63.65 is what I get, the continuous contract. Okay. So, okay. Now we're back to the story. And now I have to mention the VIX index, um, dollar VIX. And only, oh, look at that. The VIX is up. It's up 0.98 right now. And um, as I see it, it won't really, you need time. It isn't just price on the VIX you need you need price and you need time. If the VIX rallies, but it doesn't rally much and it st sticks around under 13.50, under 14, it's at 12.80 right now, um, that's not going to do very much. You need higher highs and higher lows in a concerted move to the upside that has the price accelerate above the 14.50, 14.75 high. At 11.30 on the 1st of December, it needs to punch right through that. And then the VIX needs to go above 15.74. That was that major high that was made at 11.30 on the 20th with the market turned around and the VIX started to plummet and go to lower lows than the 12.38 low of the, at, uh, on the 10th of um, November. So, okay, enough with that. So that's what I'm going to make clear. You need, you need, and you need bad news. It could be bad news about interest rates. It could be bad news about anything. The market has to perceive that now there's bad news and that bad news has to be perceived as negative. I'm sorry, that there's news and the market has to interpret it as, as negative news. And it has to be persistent. If it's just a one-day thing, all that happens is you get a one- or two-day pullback and you get a new highs. That's the only way that this market is going to pull back right here. And because it's the season of giving. And the market means, uh, for the market, it means that money managers expect to be given uh, a good bonus and they want this market to move higher. So if it fails, it's going to fail against a backdrop that says the traditional thinking should be that we go to uh, a new, that's what I was thinking earlier on, new highs by um, the last two days of, of December. And... Um, We'll see what happens. I was expecting a pullback before then, and then maybe a rally into that area. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, I'm looking at 18,000, making 17,990s really strong resistance, and 18,000 level is going to be a kind of a, a key moment. Instead of slicing through like a hot knife through butter, like you did at 16,000 um, and 15,000, this is going to be a stalling formation. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Just a real quick year. So now there were a couple of questions that I had I want to get to now. One is um, talking about short, a short squeeze, and I just need to find it right now. Of course, I'm not going to find it right now. I wrote it down. Oh, CLF. So CLF is uh, Cliff Natural Resources. You remember on the way up a couple of years back, there was just nothing to stop this. Whoosh, it went up to the 2008 high. Then it pulls back to the 200 period moving average. And whoosh, it goes from the 29 ish area, 100, 100, unbelievable. And now it's making new lows, new multi year lows. So the question is there's a very high short interest. What should I do? Uh, or, 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 question. What about it? And I said, I wouldn't touch it. Remember the other day I did this on air and I said, I, I would not touch it until it can close above uh, the nine period moving average CLF trading at 751 down 46 uh, cents today, 5.77%. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to see where, what happens when it tests the low of $7 made in the week of October the 10th of 2014. If it breaks under, that's the same rule as, as crude oil on the monthly basis. If it close underneath, it's got one bar, that bar, or the very next bar to get right back above uh, $7. If it cannot do that, it's going even lower. But look how it ties in with what I'm looking at, the uh, USD JPY. That's the uh, dollar Japanese yen. 
looking a little toppy short term, ready for some kind of a digestive moment. Doesn't have to be a big deal, but could use time, maybe a little bit of price. And look at what I'm looking at here in the euro, EURUSD. The euro is making a candle here in a trough G slash uh, B in the daily, but a trough E is possible in the monthly, uh, weekly, and while the monthly has that really important long-term uptrend line at 1.222. It's trading at 1.22977. And I've got the stochastic giving a slightly positive divergence, number one. Number two, the MACD finally has flattened out. Look at the histogram starting to move higher. It isn't above the 0% line. And when you look at this, you say to yourself, Wow, what an ugly monthly chart. I don't want to touch this. But then you think of the H pattern, the lowercase H pattern. You say, hey, wait a minute. Those H patterns can sometimes give you a really strong bounce, even if the bounce is just a bounce. But on a percentage basis from the 1.229 area, just like, um, if I can remember, CLF, uh, for, on a percentage basis, it could be a nice bounce. So I'm watching this, and I'm suggesting that it is market conditions right now that is trying its best to hold this market up. It is select areas, fewer and fewer of the biotechs are, are acting on uh, very well on the upside, but they are really powerful, and they are pushing the IBB higher. But if you look at the QQQ, that's the real story. QQQ is actually struggling. It's not making highs right now. It is making the potential H pattern that could be very positive and turn into a cup pattern. But right now, you've got Amazon. Look at the Amazon. Down, down, point, uh, point 0.94, 311. This is, a, this is the season. Come on. And look at Bubba. The reason why we didn't go into Bubba is I just didn't like that chart pattern. Something's happening. Look at the RTH. The RTH is trying to rally, but so far it looks like the QQQ series. It's kind of storing, stalling. It's having a high-level consolidation. But right now, this is the phase. If the RTH doesn't, by the end of, by Friday, if it hasn't taken out, 70.47 is suggesting that maybe retail sales will not be quite what everyone expects. Remember, my, my own belief is that we're going to have tremendous sales. But profits, that's something completely separate in the retail market vectors retail. XRT, same thing. Oh, XRT is even weaker. It's the Spider S&P Retail Index. I'm watching this real closely, and that's the reason why I think the upside right now is a little bit limited. XLU question in the den. XLU is the uh, S&P Select Utility Spider. It's acting fantastic. It hasn't made extended leg F about 46.61 in the monthly chart. It's up 52 cents in 46.39 in the daily. Weekly chart really looks like it wants to go above 45.61 to make a leg C, and then it'll get to a D sometime. Mm, I suggest that it will be sometime the first week of Maybe the last week of December, first week of January. Daily says A, B, C. Yep, it needs to get above 46.54 for leg D. And the daily chart, if you look at it, this is very interesting. I looked at it not, last, uh, not this weekend, but uh, last week. Look at that U-shaped pattern. But it does say that 46.61 area between 46.75 and 47.30, that could be very strong resistance. We'll see how it, how it reacts. It might make those legs to the upside, but we'll see whether or not it makes it powerfully or if it just sneaks above. Um, I'll be right back. Hey, that's uh, the last break coming up. Dow's down 15, S&P's down 2. I'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. Not all gold stocks are the same. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. The sale will be over before you know it, so act now and lock in this incredible price by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 13, S&P's down 2. So we've got the XLV question about that. XLV's the S&P. Select Healthcare Spider. Looks to me like this is going parabolic in the monthly, certainly. I've got here, uh, using this particular... Uh, um, no, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, it's not even software per se. Anyway, this, the, 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 the uh, resistance and support levels that I've, I've got here, 73.77 is really massive resistance in the weekly chart. Uh, right now it's at 71.39 breaking out. Just a, an amazing move. Um, can't fight that. that. That's just been a, a monster to the upside. But I think it's becoming quite quite extensively uh, um, overbought. I would not yet short it. I'd actually be waiting for other things because of the pattern that it, it, it's in right now. Unless it's going to drop immediately, it looks like it could have a rectangle type consolidation with one more spike in the monthly before it actually a weekly before it actually turns down but i suspect the first quarter of 2015 this will be a problem a sector uh, okay now let's just run through we've got the we've got to go through everything very quickly here we've got the new york stock exchange not good down 48 to 10,921 after peak g in the uh, daily we uh, the, the weekly did not make a new high above 11,107 and it has this v-shaped pattern got to watch this real closely because if it takes that 10,800 support that that'll That'll not be good, not on the weekly anyway. If you're looking at the IYC, which is the cyclical, the, uh, the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Consumer Cyclical 
sector trust. Made a peak E, it has that rectangle formation. And what I'd said to my subscribers in my, my uh, overview over the weekend, which gets repeated again Monday, I showed a chart of the uh, Dow on the weekly basis that I said is a possibility. And what I did is I put in the... Um, in the weekly, a little cup formation that says there could be a pullback of three to seven sessions and then a run into the last uh, few days of the, of, of the month. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. But that's my thinking right now. Now, if I'm very strict about this um, and the lettering, this is G slash C, as I showed earlier uh, on the daily chart of the, of the Dow. G slash C. Look at that. Holding above the uh, all the different moving averages, above the rectangle support level. So so I you just can't deny price is price and the price is holding. If by the end of the day, instead of being down eleven, the market makes a new recovery high above seventeen thousand nine ninety one besides being very impressed it is leg D and that eighteen thousand six of my crawl is something that I think is gonna be a problem and then I'll have to reassess. And I don't know why I keep thinking that because maybe it's just my experience in the market. We've been right through two millennium levels. The third one should give you come a hassle. That's the way it is. So in the meantime back at the ranch we'll make it easy. The Dow breaking to above eighteen thousand okay. A close any day this week above 18,100, I have to reassess for the end of the month because we're going to go right through it into January, and January could be a very serious pullback. That's the way it's going to have to be. But if there's a pullback before then, and we start to close underneath 17,830, it's only 110 points down. That says little timeout, and that timeout should rotate to the downside, and then we'll see what's left to the upside like a sieve taking out all, all the, the smaller uh, particles and holding the bigger ones. We'll see what happens. Now, let's just go back to this. So the uh, IWM, I haven't spoken about that today. The IWM acting very well. Not great, but very well. Because you remember, I'm looking at this pattern. I'm saying, I know this pattern, this, this double U formation. And what happens is it tests, and then it can't break out. So we're going to be watching the 118s and 117. So, Basil Chapman, check out my open call my daily service and i'll be back tomorrow have a great day stay tuned for larry presavento i'll be back tomorrow david white's newsletter the technology insider is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology if you had invested only ten thousand dollars in microsoft in 1986 you'd have been a millionaire by 2000 disruptive technology like microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the tech insider is the vehicle from tfnn to capitalize on these opportunities this is the go-to newsletter that identifies monitors and profits on mostly little known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.